It's time for us to break the bread of life. So please, uh, I know you've been sitting down. Let's stand up and pray together again. Father, we present ourselves before you. We look up unto you and pray that at this moment, we will see beyond man. We will see you on your throne. We we'll look beyond man. We we'll see in your glory. We we'll look beyond man and see you in your power. The entrance of your world will give life unto us. We we'll bring light unto us. We we'll bring strength and vigor unto us in Jesus' name. Where we have failed before, we we'll declare today by the reason of anointing that we shall fail no more in Jesus' name. The praise worship people, they began their song by saying, anointing follow me. I pray that the anointing of the Lord will fall upon both the old and the young. This place, this day in Jesus' name. The anointing to live this life of God. The anointing to possess this nature of God. Lord, grant unto us all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seats. We are making progress in our worship service for today. Last week, I gave you a message, who is a Christian? And we looked at that message in different and diverse ways. And I bless the name of the Lord for those that gave their life to Christ last week, last Sunday. And I want to say that when you get born again, I told you then that salvation is completely different from holiness. Salvation is the entrance door into the life of God. When you open that door by repenting of your sins, confessing them unto the Lord, and personally asking that the Lord will forgive and pardon your iniquities and transgressions. All the wrong things you have done, the bad things you have done, they become forgiven and forgotten. Under, uh, washed under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And at that point, you are beginning again. So, by beginning again, you have at that moment a form of holiness. A form of righteousness. Even though you are not yet living that life, but by virtue of the fact that all the deaths and the deadness and the, the guilt of your life are washed away, you became justified and God looking at you does not see the old sinner in you anymore, the old nature in you anymore, and God does not give you the opportunity, look at the life of God, look at the family of God, look at the people of God, look at the temple of the Lord, now your own heart, uh, is this the kind of life you have been expecting? And God says, if you really want to stay here, you knock at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will all come in unto him. I will sup with him and he with me. Now that you have opened the door and the king of glory has come in, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting door, that the king of glory may come in. Now that he's in, do you want him in or you want him to go out? I said you want him in or you want him to go out. That's where this life of holiness now comes in. The life of sanctification now comes in. Now you are coming from here. You have gotten to this very place. You have seen the life here. You have seen the environment here. Is this the kind of your expectation? If your answer is yes, the message today is for you. Because God will give you the grace to make you become like him. He will give me the grace to make me become like him. And no matter what our past may have been, the Lord is able to take us to that high level in Jesus' name. So, I'm talking now about the accepted life of holiness. The accepted life of holiness. Why did I use the word accepted life? There are people that have defined their own holiness. 
There are people that have assigned their own form of holiness, their own style of holiness, which is the holiness in this place is different from the holiness in that place, is different from the holiness in that place. We're talking about God's standard type of holiness. The holiness that if you go to Europe is the same holiness. Somebody say amen to that. You go to Africa is the same holiness. And some will say, well, you know, the life in America is different. Situation here is different. The culture here is different. God says, no, I am the God of all creation. And if I am the God of all humanity, the holiness in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia, in Russia, wherever, the same holiness must be the standard in the United States of America. And the Lord will make you holy. And that is the holiness that is acceptable unto God. The acceptable life of holiness. Second Corinthians 5.17 uh, I read it to you last week. I'm bringing it back again to you today. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man, you have been out of Christ before. You've been without the door before. But now you have come into Christ. And now the Bible is saying, now that you have accepted him as your Lord. Somebody say, Lord. My Lord. My own Lord. And now that you have accepted him as your Lord. You have accepted him as the commander of your life. The director of your life, the guide of your life, the owner of your life, Lord means ownership. The owner of your life, he instructs you, he directs you, he controls you, he guides you in every area of your life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man then is born again, if any man is transformed, he's a new creature, a new thing. I told you, all your old lives are wiped out. It says, old things are pass away. The lies you used to tell pass away. The arrogance of your old nature pass away. The way you used to steal pass away. You don't steal anymore. Not that you have a different way or style of stealing right now. No. You don't steal anymore. And then the eyes of immorality that you had is all pass away. The backbiting that you used to engage in passed away. It says all things are passed away. Variance is passed away. Witchcraft is passed away. Passed away. It says, lo, behold, look at that man. Look at that woman that was forgiving. Look at that man that was pardoned. Look at that woman that was washed by the blood of Jesus. He said, look at the person. He says, all things are become something new is coming to your life. In the name of Jesus. So, salvation is a gateway into the family of God. Holiness is the very nature and the life of God. Holiness is not something you practice on daily basis. It is the divine demand from every will-be heavenly citizen. So please, don't be deceived. If your goal is heaven, if your desire is heaven, we need to give up all this kind of wishy-washy Christianity. Holiness is divine demand from you and from me. And I told you last week, God expects the preacher and the pew member. The leader and those that have been led, everybody to be holy. For we are all equal in the sight of the Lord. Holiness is one thing that separates and differentiates a sinner from a saint. The Lord will make us holy in Jesus' name. And that's why we are told in Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ, that means, pay attention here. You became dead with Christ. You became dead to sin. When you were a sinner, you were dead in sin. But now, as a saint, you are dead to sin. And then, you are buried together with Christ. And now, you are resurrected in the newness of our life. That is the essence of water baptism. And if you are here, you are born again. You are yet to be baptized in water. You can see us at the end of the service today. And we'll arrange one for you. So that, that uh, part of your life can be fulfilled without any further delay. 
You die with him. You are buried with him. You resurrect with him. And so, the writer of the book of Colossians says, If ye them be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. That means you look beyond yourself. You look beyond your environment. You, you look beyond what man will say. You look beyond the commendation of man. You look beyond the applause of man. You look beyond the acceptance of man. That's why I'm talking about God's accepted kind of holiness. Not what everybody is saying. Ah, that brother is holy. That sister is holy. And yet in the sight of God, the word is rejected. You will not be rejected. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek, the, seek those things which are above. We are Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections. Set your interest. Set your desires, set your passion, set your affections on things above, not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. That, that is a secret right now. Pay attention here. That is a secret right now. He's saying that being born again, pay attention here, you are are dead with Christ and now it's something that you don't know you don't see it your life is hid with God somebody is under protection I said somebody is under divine protection in the name of Jesus that means when you are sanctified when you are holy there is no power of darkness that will be able to touch you it just means that There is no weapon that is formed against you that will prosper in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him. So, you are under the protective power of the Lord. It says your life is hid in, uh, with, with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Multiply therefore. Put under control therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. Get rid of it. If you are going to be holy, not that you are holy in the church and you are holy at work. Not that you are holy at church and unholy in the house. Fornication. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Those ladies Fumbling with your body, get rid of them. Those men, fumbling with your body, you get rid of them. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, young people. You suddenly realize that as a teenager, there is something in you, the hormone in you, is 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 growing and all of a sudden you see that you always want to be around the opposite sex the opposite sex be careful be careful it says modify that inordinate affection it's not an ordinary one amen and then it says if will concupiscence and covetousness which is idolatry can you see covetousness there are a lot of people that say uh, I am born again, but they are covetous. They are covetous. They are coveting what belongs to their fellow brother, fellow sister. And maybe you are, what you are coveting is the office, the, of, the position and the title of your fellow brother or sister. Somebody is the leader there and you are coveting that and you will do everything possible at the politicians of the world to get them out of the place. So you can take their place. The Bible says it's an evidence you are not yet living that life of holiness, righteousness. And the Bible says it is idolatry. You are worshipping position. You are worshipping title. You know some people, you tell them not to do some things in the church for corrective measure. And you know, there is corrective um, uh, measure, there are punitive measure. And, uh, but we don't understand the difference. Everything is there. They are punishing me, they are punishing me, they are punishing me. No, to correct some things. And uh, because of that, you think, well, my life is over. Your life is not over. I say your life is not over. Understand the plan of God for your life will stand for as long as there is life in you in Jesus' name. 
So, the Bible says, again, that all those things that are covetousness, get rid of them. Idolatry, get rid of them. Well, but if you now worship position and tithe you more than God, then it becomes a problem to you because it's like uh, my title, my position, my honor, my dignity, my glory, you will never be able to see what God is trying to do in you. He says that has become an idol in you. For which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walk in time past, when ye lived in them, he's saying, this is the same life you were living before you came to me. Get rid of that kind of life. Get on you a new life. And so, put also, put also, uh, uh, you also put off, rather, put off these things, anger. Anger. You know, sometimes when we have some people that can talk, talk, talk tough and talk hard, it's, they are angry. No, they may not be angry. That may just be their way of expression. Because some people can be calm, quiet, and collected, and they are more angrier than the devil. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And you only look at the one that is talking and say, that is the angry one. No, he may not even be angry. He's just expressing himself. But the real one that is anger, I mean, that is angry, will not let go anything. Will not forgive anything. Over my dead body, I pray they will repent. He says, rot, rot, malice. Have you seen people that say they are believers? We're talking about the life of God, the acceptable life of God. For as long as this, you see on your own, I see on my own. You don't find that in the family of God. If your brother offend you, what do you do? Tell him. And then, if he repents, what does the Bible say we should do? Forgive him. But you know some people, they are wrong. You tell them, they will still be arguing. They will still be bustling. They will still want to justify every wrong thing. They can't even take the sinner's place. They can't even accept to be, say, okay, you are wrong. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I need another amen. They will rather prefer to keep malice. I don't talk to you, you don't talk to me. I'm avoiding you, avoiding me. If death comes to meet you in the midst of that, do I tell you the truth? You will miss heaven. You will miss heaven. And then it says, fill the communication. Dirty languages. You don't allow those from your mouth. It says, lie not to one another. Lie not to one another. Saying that you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on this new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision. Can you see there? There is no difference between God. Barbarians, Scythians, bond or not free, but Christ in all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowers of mercy, bowers of mercy, Kindness, put on kindness. Put on humbleness of mind. Put on meekness. Put on long suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving who? Forgiving who? I pray that nobody will leave this sanctuary today without forgiving those that offended them in Jesus' name. If any man have a quarrel against any, things do happen. You stepped on my toe. I stepped on your toe. Things do happen. If any man do have quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And you will do it. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. To the which also ye are called in one body. Can you see? There is no skill, there is no division. You are called in one body and be ye thankful, be appreciative of any little good gesture that is done towards you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 15, verses 1 to 5. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh, how? Uprightly. Uprightly, not crookedly. And walketh righteousness. And speaketh the truth in his heart. Pay attention here. Pay attention. Look up here. You want to make it to heaven? I say you want to make it to heaven? There are people that when they are telling you things, they have one thing in their mind and they deliberately, not that they are making a mistake, they intentionally are saying something else just to dispatch you, just to let you go, just to make you feel good. You can go. I know what I'm going to do. Have you forgiven me? Yes, I have forgiven you. The kind of forgiveness that David gave unto, is it a Hushai or who was that? As the Lord liveth. But then before he dies, Solomon come. You know what he did to me? Do not allow his gray hair to go to gray. You are a wise man. I didn't say kill him, but you are a wise man. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Lord, who shall abide in the tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor. What are you doing to your neighbor behind them? Are you hurting them or you are helping them? Are you building them up or you are destroying them? If you really want to make heaven, there will be need for repentance. There will be need for a change of life. Husband, wife, how are you treating yourselves when your spouse is not there? Are you destroying one another? Are you building up one another? It says, not take it up a reproach against his neighbor. A reproach against his neighbor. You're making fun and jest of them. In whose eyes a white, con a white person is contained. But he honored them that fear the Lord. You don't accommodate sin. You don't tolerate sin. You don't encourage sin. You don't promote sin. But you honor the Lord in your life. He that swareth to his own heart and changeth not. And changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to use tree. Not taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall not be mourned. You will not be mourned. I said you will not be mourned. In the name of Jesus. And so, we are looking at three points, actually. Number one, the prerequisites to acceptable life of holiness. Prerequisites, the condition, the requirements to acceptable life of holiness. And of course, I'm going to be very, very brief on that because I dealt with that very well last Sunday. How you must be born again. Why you must be born again. And now today, I'm still telling you that that is the requirement for your holy living. Understand, when you repented of your sin, your past sins were forgiven. The life you now begin to live in this new life is what we're not talking about. The relationship, the language, the communication... The behavior, the attitude, the conduct, the character of this new life is what I'm talking about now. And this is not going to be a kind of message of jumping up and down. It's something that needs to sink down into you, that needs to drive you to your knee and pray and weep and wait before the Lord and say, Lord, do it for me. And I will do it in Jesus' name. Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 3 that except a verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, except your life be changed, except your life be transformed, except you are renewed and, uh, 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 and, uh, and uh, get into this life of God, you will not be able to see 
the kingdom of God, I tell you, being born again is the open door into the life of God. And then when you are born again, you get into it, you see it. Please understand the language of the scripture. You will not be able to see the kingdom of God. That is different from even living in it. Just to be able to see it, if you are not born again, listen to this, before I had my salvation experience, if you've been here for a while, I've told you, I was born in the church, I was raised in the church. I told you, I became a minister in the church where I was. I had the privilege of preaching to people, but I was talking about God and preaching about Christ that I knew not. I knew him not. Until 1981, when I went for a program very close to my office then. They call it break time fellowship. I pray God will make you a blessing to your generation. The people that put that fellowship together, it was in an office environment during the lunch hour time. They just felt, those of us that are believers here, let's come together. And then they were inviting people and then I heard of it. Somebody who knew my position and everything told me, this will be good for you. And I went there. And then, that very day, God arrested me. Before you leave here today, God will arrest somebody. I said God will arrest somebody. God arrested me. I was weeping and wailing like a little child. By the time it was, it was over, my sins were forgiven. My life was transformed. I got up from my knees. I, each time I talk about it, I have talked about this more than any other story I've told you in this church. Literally, I feel, I, I'm taken back to that very day. I got up from my knees. I was taking steps. I was missing my steps. I was that light on the floor. Literally light on the floor. When the burden of sin is taken away, your life will become light. So, it's not about religion. If it is about religion, I knew it. I grew up in it. If it is about the do's and don'ts of the church, I knew everything. If it is about ministry, I could tell you. When I left the church, they sent from the headquarters, what is going on? This young man must not leave. I went to attend that meeting and I said, nobody offended me here. They said, tell us what happened. I said, nobody offended me. But I found Jesus. I said, I found Jesus. I said, I found Jesus. Somebody here will find Jesus. But you know the irony of it? The person who invited me to that meeting where I got converted, about 10, 15 years later, we were talking in her house and then I said sister XYZ I said do you know you are the vessel that God used for my salvation he said pastor what are you talking about maybe more than 15 years what are you talking about I said I meant God used you for me she said how she said, but you got converted before me. I said, when did you get converted? She told me she didn't get converted on about five or ten years after my conversion. She wasn't born again. She was attending that fellowship. Everyone attending our church without salvation. Ah, the spirit of God will arrest you. Thank God for mercy. She told me, come. It is good here. The word of God is here. She was hearing it, but the word had no effect in her life. I declare the word of God will have effect in your life in Jesus' name. Thank God for grace. That later found her. To God's glory, she's a minister in deeper life today. It's not enough to go to a church. Don't even say, uh, I go to deeper life. Deeper life is not your source of salvation. Can I tell you this? Only Jesus can save. 
I said only Jesus can save. I said only Jesus can save. If you come to a deeper lie and you do not connect with God, you will die in your sin. So, don't cover up and say, I am a deeper lifer. That is just a name. Be deep in Christ. I said be deep in Christ. Be deep in Christ. Uh, and Christ will be deep in you in Jesus name. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, be you a pastor, a priest, or a pope, or a pew, or, or a pew member, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? <laughs> Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, or adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Not thieves. Some they steal. They don't just steal from man, they steal from God. You know, earlier this morning, somebody asked a question about tithe and offering. And I love the question. And thank God for that question. And thank God for the answer. Do you know why people all over questions. Why tight in the church. Why tight in the church. They never question. Why does the state collect tax from you? They never ask the question. Why does the nation collect tax from you? And yet. The nations and the state. They got it from the word of God. And they are using it to build the nations. But because the church does not have direct access to our money, we can argue it. We can complain. We can criticize. We can, we, we, we can synonize the pastors. God will have mercy upon you. Amen. The scripture cannot be broken. Somebody say amen to that. The Bible says, if you don't pay your tithe, you are a thief. QED. You are a thief. You are stealing from God. He is the one that gives us the power to make wealth. That tithe is not your money. And some, some don't know they are hurting themselves. You look at it. When you don't give that tithe, is the work of God progressing or not? Is progressing with you. God will walk. Without you, God will walk. When you are not there for God, God will pass you by and use somebody else. The blessing that should have been yours will go to somebody. Don't you understand when Obedidom accommodated the ark of God? God bless him. Can you imagine if David had taken the ark to his own place at that time? Who would have been blessed? David. Give, it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. But with the same measure that you give, it shall be made unto you also in Jesus' name. So, that verse 10 says, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Titus chapter 2. Salvation is the prerequisite. You must be born again. Verses 11 to 13. For the grace of God. I explained that word grace last week. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. The divine enablement. You see, the grace, the power, the mercy of God, the kindness of God that brought salvation has appeared unto all men. It brought salvation, it got you saved. And it's now saying that same grace is still available for you to live in this newness of life. I need an amen. It says, now that you have come into the fold, the grace in verse 12 is now teaching us. That is why we, I like this church. It's a teaching ministry. Teaching who? Can you now personalize it? Teaching? Me. Teaching me. Don't you remember? Say, are you teachable? I said, tell somebody, are you teachable? 
It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that deny, giving up, abandoning ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. This world, not another world. This world, this place, where you are, even in this United States of A. You live that life of God. A life acceptable unto God. A life where pleasing unto God, God will give us the grace in Jesus' name. And when you live that life on daily basis, say, looking for that blessed hope, it will come your way. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Second Peter, chapter 3. Second Peter, chapter 3, from verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy, holy conversation and godliness? It will happen in Jesus' name. Looking and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Every believer is waiting for that day to come. The appearing of the master. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall met with fervent heat. Nevertheless we according to his promise. And his promises never fail. I said his promises never fail. We according to his promise look for new heaven and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Righteousness righteousness point number two proof of acceptable life of holiness proof the proof of acceptable life of holiness first peter chapter 1 verse 14 as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance not fashioning yourselves according to what the former lost in your ignorance. People that are living carnal as believers are ignorant. People that are not free from all form of sin are ignorant. The Bible says, verse 15, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men. How do we know if a man is holy? Number one, through your conversation. Your language. Your comportment. Your department. I didn't say your department. Your department. Through your attitude. Through your character. Through your behavior want to see. All these things are the things that communicate your life. Because it says, in all manner of conversation. Conversation. And now, Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men. How do you know a man or a woman that is holy? You're a man of peace. You're a woman of peace. You're a child of peace. You're a student of peace. With all men and holiness. Without which, somebody help me. No man shall see the Lord. Look up here. John 3.3 3 says, Except a man be born again, he will not be able to do what? To see the kingdom of God. Please, I'm trying to make a connection here. Are you with me? It says, without salvation, you can see the kingdom. Come to Hebrews chapter, 11, chapter 12. It says that without holiness, it's not just you seeing the kingdom now. No man will be able to see who? The Lord. You have to be in the kingdom to see the Lord of the kingdom. The king rules and reigns over the kingdom. It is after you have entered into the kingdom through salvation, and then you are now living a life of holiness that you'll be able to see the king of the kingdom. No man shall be able to see the Lord. Do you get the connection? Praise the Lord. 
And we are told in Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 that an highway shall be there. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those the way fearing men. Not the careless people. Not the lawless people. Not the disgruntled people. We fearing men. Those fools shall not err therein. Those fools shall not err therein. Let's come back to that uh, psalm we read earlier on. It says in Psalm 15, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? The tabernacle of God is the dwelling place of God. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteously and speaketh the truth in his heart. How truthful and sincere are you. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contend, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury. You don't take advantage of people, nor take the reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall not be moved. First John chapter 3 from verse 1. First John chapter 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. That will be your lot. That will be my portion. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, the world knows us not. Because it knows him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we shall know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. As he is. Pay attention here. You are not just seeing the kingdom anymore. What are you seeing now? You are seeing the Lord. He rules on the inside of you. He reigns on the inside of you. He controls your life. He directs your life. He instructs your life. He guides your steps. And every man and every woman and every student and every child that had this hope in him does what? Purified himself, even how as he is pure. Now, pay attention here. Not as somebody is pure. Many a times we try to imitate somebody. No. As he is pure, let the word of God be your yastic, and he will help in Jesus' name. First Corinthians 15 33 says, Be not deceived, evil communication corrupts good manner. Corrupts good manner. Corrupts good manner. So then, if you're going to live this life of holiness, righteousness, and uprightness, you see that word holy, holy, holy all the time. You see the word jumping out to us. So then, what is holiness? Holiness is peace with God. Holiness is peace of God. I said holiness is what? Peace with God and then holiness is what? The peace of God. You reconcile with God and then you now have the life of God in you. It's the peace with God you reconcile. The peace of God you now have in. He comes into you. He dwells in you. He rules and reigns from the inside of you. The peace we are talking about also brings the presence of God. Holiness is proven by the presence of God in your life. The presence of God. When we see you, we see God in you. When we see humility in you, we see this nature of holiness. When we see you in obedience to your parents, obedience to authorities, obedience to leadership, we see this holiness in you. When we see submission in you, we see holiness. When we see love, 
love for everybody, not hatred, not acrimony, not conspiracy against anybody, but love for everybody. You are honest, you are sincere, irrespective of whose ox is God. You stand on your feet. You stand on your ground. Uh, knowing fully well that if death should come now, by the grace of God and the light of the word of God, I will make it to heaven. Amen? Amen? But you know what some people do? They love this one and they hate this one. When their friend does the wrong thing, what do they do? They cover it all. They excuse their friends. When their enemies do the same thing, if they say they have enemy, what do they do? They expose it. The Lord is saying, that is not the nature of God. That is not the nature of God. Holiness. Holiness. We treat all men equally, irrespective of who is affected. Even if it means for you to suffer for that, you will choose to suffer. Moses suffered for standing for something. The apostles suffered for standing for something. We will stand for something. You know, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. And it's a matter of time. The same people you are supporting in unrighteousness will know that you are unrighteous. So when they read me, when they need the real advisor in their life, they will go to somebody else. When they want to hear the truth, they will not come to you. They, will, they know where to go. The Lord will make you a blessing to your generation. You have love for everybody. Both the sinners and the saints. Both those that help you and those that hurt you. You live a selfless life. How do we know somebody's holy? I'm talking about the proofs of accepted life of holiness now. A selfless life. And you say, I live for the sake of others. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You just make up your mind. I want to be a blessing to my generation. You live a selfless life in serving the Lord. A selfless life in serving other people. A selfless life in serving the church, serving the community. A selfless life in giving your tithe and your offering. You live a life without bitterness, without envy, without hatred, without jealousy. Without anger, without resentment, without gossiping, without conspiracy, without lying, without stealing, a life without rebellion, a life without evil imagination, a life without variance, a life without vengeance. You, di you did this to me, I will do that to you. No, you forgive easily. You relate with people easily. You rejoice with people that God is blessing and helping. You don't wish that they fall so you can take their place. No, you don't do that as a real child of God. You make this holy living your priority. Now that means, if for any reason, you said something you should not have said. You did something you shouldn't have done. What do you do? You quickly take care of it. There is a song that says, Anytime I do a thing I should not do, Anytime I say a word I should not say, let me tell you what I do, and it brings a blessing too. I just steal some ways, I just steal away somewhere to pray. I just steal away and pray, I just steal away and pray, and I tell my blessed Lord to take my guilt away. I just steal away and pray, I just steal away and pray, I just steal away somewhere to pray. Are you like that? Or you justify your wrong? You cover it all. And then you use another light to cover 
a lie. And now you're looking for supporters. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. This holy man makes holiness a priority of his life. Leads holiness for the purpose of heaven and heaven alone. Seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above. You make it a pleasure. You, you rejoice in it. You take satisfaction and pleasure in it. You partner. You make holiness your partner. Your partner. And pay attention here. If holiness is going to be your partner, many people will not be your friend. Am I communicating here? But you know, we want this one to speak good of me. I want that one to speak good of me. If that is you, they will speak good of you, but heaven will not accept you. Because those people speaking good of you, when the time comes, they want you to speak good about them too. I thought we are friends. Friends cover up friends. That is not the word of God. Amen? So, be sure the kind of friend you want to have. I want the kind of friend that will help me get to heaven. I want the kind of friend that will let me know when I am going wrong and going out of the way. I want that kind of a friend. I want that kind of friend. And I used to have a friend in this church many years back. When I saw him going out of the way, I called him, brother, this is wrong. That is wrong. And he said, no, you don't understand. I cannot fall. I cannot backslide. It was a matter of time. When I saw that he was not heeding to correction, I drew the line. People were shocked. Because people in the church never knew that we could part ways. I drew the line. He didn't offend me personally. Please understand. He today, nothing he did wrong to me personally, but the life he was living. The news about him that were coming, I knew. They say, show me your friend, and I will tell you who you are. I knew time up. I drew the line. He lived that life. Do I tell this story? He died in that situation. It's a sorrow of my heart that the very first friend I could say I had in this church died a backslider. I warned him. I told him. And you know, even now, some people would say, okay, as a pastor, uh, because we are so close, I laugh with everybody, I joke with everybody, and then if in the midst of that I see you doing something, my countenance changed. My position changed. Do I tell you this? And I'm not ashamed to say it. Amen. Not some years back, because the same thing I do here, I do in my house. We are playing, we're rolling on the floor, we're doing everything. I play with my kids, and then when I see something wrong that I'm not supposed to see, I deal with it. They don't understand. One of them later on, after he became matured, he said, Daddy, we actually thought you were bipolar. I said, of course, yes, that is a spiritual bipolar. Do you know some of you think like that? Ah, he smiles with us. He did do this with us. And then the next thing is, uh, you're on this evening. Ah, is he out of his mind? Can he ever do that? Yes. You know why? I wanted to make heaven. And the more of that I do, the more I watch my own step. The more I watch my life. The more I watch my conduct and my character, the more I watch everything. But you know what? If uh, you do it and I say, it's okay, God understands. It's okay. When it is my turn, what will you do? You will cover me up also. Something happened to somebody in another location and I called the pastor and I called the person. I said, this person should step down from walking. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then they left and the pastor went and said, you can continue walking. And it got to a point, I don't know how I got to know later on. And I said, but I said this person should stop walking in the church. 
Isaiah 52, 11, Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from the midst of her. Touch no unclean thing. Ye that bears the vessel of the Lord. He wanted a good name. He wanted friends. He wanted companions in the ministry. At the expense of the gospel. The judge of heaven and earth is alive. And when I got to know, I called him. He said, well, he was trying to defend it. I said, put the brother on the phone. And then the brother came on the phone. And the brother himself, he said, pastor, he said, even me, myself, I told my pastor that I'm not supposed to be ministering at this time. Can you imagine? So, even himself knew that the pastor was aiding and abetting evil. The Lord will not make you that kind of a person. I, was, I didn't know the person told the pastor that. And the pastor had it. I said, okay, can you hear what your own member is saying now? I told you you're, you're, you're myself. I told you in his presence. I didn't just say, okay, go and do it so that uh, I look like I want to be the good person. You are the, no, no, no. I called the two of you and you still went and do contrary. And the brother himself came and said, pastor, with this one in my life, I'm not supposed to be doing something in the church. The brother was real. You will be real. I said you will be real in the name of Jesus. Holiness. Holiness unto the Lord is our watch, word, and song. That is one thing we inherited in this church. That is our heritage in Deeper Life Bible Church. And we shall keep it by the grace of God. I said we shall keep it by the power of the Lord. We'll live the lie. We'll live by example. And the Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Teaching us. Teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldliness. We will deny them in Jesus' name. Is there power to live this kind of life we are talking about? Because it's like, Pastor, you don't understand. For as long as we are in this tabernacle, how can we live above sin? Hey, before I gave my life to Christ, I was thinking that way. When I got to uh, the glimpse of salvation, I saw people that were living the life. And I thought I could just do it myself. I wanted the life they were living. But I didn't know how. I didn't ask questions. I can tell you there were times I would slap myself and say this month. I said, don't talk this way again. Before I know it, I'm at it again. But when salvation came, I said when salvation came, things are different now. Something happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus. Things I love before have passed away. Things I love more have come to stay. Things are deep friend now something happened to me when i gave my life to jesus beyond coming to church beyond the religious creeds and sacraments beyond giving money to the church and walking in the church beyond having a name deeper life member or maybe we even give you a sticker i am deeper Beyond all those human facial things, can heaven look at you and say, you are my child? Can angels look at you and say, he's qualified, she's qualified. And yet, the power for this life is available. I said the power is available. The Bible tells us that for this cause, Jesus suffered without the gate. He suffered for this. He paid the price for it. We will take advantage of it. I say we will take advantage of it. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, that he might purify the people, that he might make holy the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us, let us, brothers, sisters, members of this church, let us, members all over the world, let us, whether you are deeper life or no deeper life, for as long as you say you are a child of God washed by the blood of Jesus, let us go forth 
therefore unto him without the count, bearing his reproach. For we have no continuous city, but we seek one to come. I said we seek one to come. I said we seek one to come. And the Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. I said it is time to seek the Lord. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. It will happen in Jesus' name. And look at the promise in Ezekiel chapter 36. It says, verse 24, 25. It says, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you unto your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Every idol of the enemy in your life will be taken away in Jesus' name. So then, understand when you are sanctified, the power of God is there to give you the privilege of divine nature. The power of God is available to make you a son or the daughter of the Lord on daily basis. Therefore, come out from among them. From among them, all those worldly friends, all those carnal friends, all those sinful friends. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. See the Lord. And then I will be a father unto you, and you will be a, a, a son of my sons and my daughter. See the Lord, the power of sonship. For as many as received him. To them, God give the power to become the sons of God. When you have this sanctification or holiness experience, you have the peace of heart in the two months of life. The peace of God over there. When you have it, there is a divine protection over your life from the attacks of the adversary, the accuser of the brethren. Listen, every day of your life, the enemy is looking for something to accuse you about. But when you are holy, I say when you are holy, he will find nothing in you in Jesus name. The prince, Jesus said, the prince of this world coming but hath nothing in me. Nothing. Every property and deposit of the devil in your life shall be emptied out in Jesus name. You'll be protected from all those attacks of the enemy. He went to God and God said, have you seen my servant Job? God will speak for you. I said, God will speak for you. Heaven will speak for you. He said, have you seen my servant? He said, my servant. Can God look at me and say, I am his servant? Can he look at you and say, you are his servant? If you are the servant of the pastor here, you get the reward of the pastor. Listen, if you are the servant of deeper life, by which you get the, uh, the, the reward of deeper life. But if you are the servant of the Lord, if you are the servant of the Lord, he watches over you. I said he watches over you. I said he watches over you. In the name of Jesus. He gives you the power to live this holy life we are talking about. And he fills you with his Holy Spirit within. His Holy Spirit within. You can't get it without holiness. Because God does not dwell in a dirty place. He said, your heart is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Did I tell you sometimes ago that, uh, that I am pregnant with God? Amen? Did, did I, was it here I told you before? That I am pregnant. That is, anywhere I go, I am pregnant. Who am I carrying? You know why I said so? Amen? He said, I will dwell in them. Amen? When he's dwelling in me, wherever I am going, where is God going? <laughs> Somebody just missed something. Let me digress a little bit. Go to the book of Psalm 114. Psalm 114. Amen. And let me show you something very quickly there. It says then, Psalm 1, when Israel went out of Egypt and the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary. Listen to that. Judah was where? His sanctuary. And Israel is dominion. The sea saw it and fled. And Jordan was driven back. The mountains keep like rams. And the little hills like lambs. 
what ailed thee? What happened to you? Oh, thou sea, that thou fledest, thou Jordan, that thou was driven by. Ye mountains that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Verse 17. What did he say? I can hear somebody. I can hear somebody. The devil will tremble before you. Principles and powers will tremble before you. Satan will tremble before you. Tremble thou earth. At the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, we turn back the rock, we turn the rock into a standing water, the flint into a fountain of water. Look at it. He began by telling us about Israel and Egypt, and uh, uh, sorry, about Israel and Jacob, and then he said Judah was a sanctuary. Judah, what does the word Judah stand for? It stands for praise. You live the life that glorifies the Lord every day of your life. And God endures you. The Bible now say, the sea saw it and fled. What did the sea say? Hey, Judah was pregnant with God. Judah was coming with God. And as God was coming, the glory was coming. The glory was coming. And, and, and then the sea saw the glory and said, oh, get out of the way. I said, get out of the way. I said, get out of the way. It will happen in Jesus' name. The power is there with you. The power is there with you to live that life of holiness, of righteousness, and of peace in the name of Jesus Christ upon your feet. It is your turn to possess that nature of God, that life of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's your turn. It's your turn. A heart like yours is my desire. A like, yeah, like yours is what I am seeking for. Please hear me, Lord. Please hear me, Lord. Please hear me, Lord. Give me a heart like yours. Don't ask God to give you the, like, like, the heart like mine. The heart of God. The very mind of the Almighty. Please hear me, Lord. Please hear me, Lord. If it is possible for the media department to play this, the, the choir song in a very solemn way. Please hear me, Lord. Listen, I'm not closing you in prayer today. You want to go on your knees, go on your knees and set your account with God. You want to remain standing, remain on your feet and set to this account with God. You won't live here as you came today in Jesus' name. You won't live here as you came. You won't live here as you came. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. I know what a joy that was my soul. Something happened, and now I know it touched me and made me whole. It touched me. Oh, he touched me, and oh, that joy that flows my soul—something happened, and now I know he touched me. Oh, he touched me. He will touch somebody today. And oh, what joy that floods my soul. Cry out to God today. Now is accepted time. Something. Today is your day of salvation. And now I know. Turning point in your life. No more religion but righteousness. No more drink of but real Christianity.
cry to him is between you and your God. Talk to him. Whatever the way we want to talk to him today. Put my heart, oh Lord. Search my heart, oh Lord. Prepare me for heaven, oh Lord. I don't want to serve in vain. I don't want to worship in vain. I don't want to come to church in vain. I don't have to. I don't want to have title in vain. Oh Lord, make me holy. Make me holy spiritually. What would be your testimony and my testimony? If that comes and we cannot make heaven. Keep me true, O oh Lord. On the path of righteousness. Even in this land. In this very present world. In this environment. Keep me true, O oh Lord. Keep me true, O oh Lord. The words of my mouth, the thoughts of my heart, the actions of my body, oh Lord, bring them under the x ray of your world. My heart, oh Lord, under the knife of the surgeon of heaven, operate on me, oh Lord. Take away my Adamic nature. Take me away. Take away my Adamic Adamic conduct. Take away my Adamic character. Take away my Adamic behavior. Take away my Adamic language. Oh Lord. Then he said, Restore back unto me the joy of salvation. Oh, the joy of your salvation. Lord. Visit me afresh. Isaiah cried unto you, you visit Isaiah. David prayed unto you, you answer David. Oh Lord, do it in me. Do it in me. Do it in me. Do it for me in the name of Jesus. Today is not the day you are listening to anybody's prayer. It's the day you are pouring out your heart unto the Lord and say, It is me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, not my pastor, not my member. It is me, O Lord. It is me, O Lord. It is me, O Lord. If I need to till away somewhere to pray, it is me, O Lord. I need the life of God. I need the nature of God. I need the grace of God. Do it, O Lord. It's enough of church. It's enough of being church. I need more of God in my life. One more time, oh Lord, touch me one more time, oh God. I need the touch of the master, I need the touch of the Lord, touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time. Tell the Lord to touch you again. You had the experience before you lost it. Oh Lord, visit me, a friend. Touch me one more time. Oh Lord, I need the touch of the master. I need the touch of the Lord in my life. Yes, 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 yes. Touch me one more time. Touch me one 